The biggest myth we hear is often solar uh, does not work. Uh, it's more of a scam or bait and switch. Um, the reality is uh, solar will always help to save you money. Um, when it comes to solar, I guess the biggest thing is how long it's going to take to save you money. The biggest myth we hear is Facebook told me get paid to go solar. Uh, it's free to go solar. Government's going to give me money to go solar. In reality, uh, there's nothing free. We can all agree on that. So there's two ways of getting solar. You can do what's called a PPA release or you can buy the system. Um, PPAs are essentially what, what stands for Power Purchase Agreement. So essentially what happens is the uh, solar installer will look at your bill. It'll say you're paying 18 cents a kilowatt hour. So it'll give you solar for free um, and say, will you pay me 16 cents a kilowatt hour? Uh, so it sounds like a good deal, uh, but it goes up 2.9% every year annually. So your bill is back to where it was pretty quickly and you have to pay that for 20 to 25 years. So if you add that up, you, you pretty much just gave that solar company sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 for solar. Meanwhile, uh, you don't get any of the tax credits. You don't get any of the state subsidies because you don't own the system. So the other way of getting solar is you buy it. Uh, you, bu you purchase it outright. Whatever the cost is, if it's, let's just say 50,000, you get a 30% federal tax credit, which would be 15,000. So you get a $15,000 refund, so it only spends you 35. You also get, in the states that we work in, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New Jersey, what's called SREC, which stands for Solar Renewable Energy Credits. That is a check you get every single year for going solar, as long as you own the system. So let's just say that's another $500 a year. That means by year 10, you got another $5,000. So instead of spending 50,000, you just spent 30,000. So to put that in perspective, if your average bill is, let's say, thirty or $300 a year, that means you're going to spend $3,600 a year or $36,000 in 10 years. So if you do the math, you're already below a 10-year payback, assuming that utility company does not raise their rates at all, which we both know is never going to happen. Good question. So I get all the time, I'd go solar if I lived in Florida, or I'd go solar if I lived in Arizona. Um, obviously, there's there's uh, truth to some of those statements, but you know where we live, um, we give estimates based on the weather, um, also the latitude and longitude of our environment. So when we give estimates, you're going to see a range. We call it a you know kilowatt hour per kilowatt production. So every state's different. The best state obviously is Arizona just because it never rains, right? So the reality isn't really the, um, uh, the, the latitude of where we live, but really the weather patterns. So in Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, New Jersey, they're pretty much all the same when it comes to about, we say about 1300 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of power. Um, not that much different from any of the Southern states except for the arid states. Um, so, in reality, is it the best state in the union? No. But is it the worst state? By far, it's not. Obviously, Seattle would probably be a bad place to install solar because it rains all the time. Um, so, we take that into consideration when we give estimates and make sure that people are getting the most bang for their buck. Yeah, good question. We get that a lot. Um, you know, my roof is not good for solar. So the first thing I look at is what kind of roof it is. Uh, if it's metal, if it's shingle, if it's slate, uh, if it's wood. So as, at this point, we're not installing on wood or shingle, but any kind of metal roof um, and shingle roof we can install on. Uh, corrugated metal, staining seam, asphalt shingle, uh, even rubber roofs we can install on. So the biggest thing I hear is I don't want to install solar because my roof goes east or west. In reality, uh, east or west produces the same amount of energy. The only roof I wouldn't install on would be a northern roof because when you're going to the north, you're just going to lose so much production because um, the sun never hits it directly. In the summer, it's not bad because it's coming straight down. But in the winter, you're just never going to hit that direct uh, UV light to produce as much energy as possible, which in turn will obviously affect your investment. Not really. So any house, I mean, I would prefer, you know, the rancher because nice, even plane, easy to install to. Some of the newer homes that have a lot of hexagonal or, you know, uh, parallelogram, you know, type roofs or hip roofs are harder to install in, but you can still do it. Uh, there's no, 
you know, a bad roof, I guess. I don't care if it's six months old or if it's 60 years old. You can, as long as you have a good south facing or east or west facing roof with a good pitch, uh, you can produce energy where we live to offset your bill and obviously um, help the environment in, in the process. Um, we often hear, my house is built in 1950. I can't get solar. In reality, you know, the, uh, the electrical current hasn't really changed that much. People used to say 220, you know, 100 years ago. Now it's all 240. Um, but it doesn't really make a difference when it comes to installing solar because we're going to that meter, between the meter and the um, main service panel. We have run into instances where, um, you know, they're so far out of date, we had to upgrade that panel. But the good thing about that is we can do that work while we're there to help, obviously, upgrade your service panel to be safer um, to install solar. But it does not happen that often. Maybe a few times a year we have to do that. The number one thing I hear is I can't go solar because I have an HOA. Most HOAs will allow you to get solar. We see some restrictions on where it can go, uh, meaning you can't have solar facing the streets, but the sides and the back are fine. Um, but there are is some legislation, I should say, in the House trying to restrict that. Right? The HOA should not be allowed to dictate to that homeowner uh, where they purchase their solar from or really their electric in general. Um, but as it stands, the number two things we hear from HOAs are one, the type of panels, but we can install all black panels. So obviously it will not um, fail that criteria. And number two is the, you know, like I said, the, the front of the house versus the sides or the back. I often hear that solar is not right for where I live or my house or my, my roof orientation, but in reality, um, where we live and work, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New Jersey, we see average payback periods regardless of roof of about anywhere from four to eight years. So where we are, there's always going to be a payback period, but in reality, it will always pay for itself. Really, the only problem that we see is often shading from trees. So as long as you have a, a roof that's not shaded out by trees and other obstructions that can get direct sun to produce energy, you will always get a good ROI and always a, pay, a good payback period in our location. A lot of people come to us and assume I'm not good for solar. So the first thing I say is I understand. Let's pull it up. We we'll use some satellite imagery to kind of take a look at that roof to A, figure out what's the orientation, what's the pitch, and is there shading. Once we determine, really, there's no shading obstacles, which is probably the most important thing, um, and there's some good roof exposure to the sun with a good pitch, then it's always going to be a good investment for the homeowner to look into solar and how it can help them.